Hey there, fellas. Today I'm going to guide you through everything that you need to know and have to start your drift journey in a Acero Corsa. That being content manager, CSP, how to set up your wheel together with the settings, neck effects, drive settings, applications, video settings, cars, tracks, and tunes, all these things. Now, if you have been new to a set of Corsa and you don't know what is this program, well, we're going to start from here. So this program is called Content Manager. It's an alternative launcher rather than you starting your set of Corsa, obviously from Steam. Then if you've been doing that, well, you kind of live under a rock. This game is very old. So what you want to do instead, guys, all links will be down in the description. You want to go to this website again, link in the description, go down, open the link. Then you want to install all these, which you need for the game and the custom shaders patch. So you avoid any errors and so on. Then you can download content manager from here. Now, once you've downloaded the content manager, now you're in this tab, you want to go to settings. Then you want to go to custom shaders patch and you want to install it. There will be a green button if I'm not mistaken here and you need to click install. Then once you've installed it, you want to be on about an updates and update to the latest public version. Now, as you can see, I am on a paid version, which is gray because you cannot update to it. You need to install it manually. How you get this version, if you're interested, then you want to go to, again, link in description, X for Fabs, Patreon. And one very important thing, once you go to his Patreon, you want to navigate to the latest post, download the latest custom shaders patch. And sometimes in the archives, he includes new versions of content manager. It's just going to be the executionable again. So that's that. Once you become a member, you want to go down and check all the posts until you find a post with the content manager. Luckily, with the lights patch 0.25 preview one, we're lucky to get a new version, new build of content manager. So what you want to do is you want to download it. Once you download it, you open the archive, then you close these ads and you drop content manager wherever you like to use it. One very good location is the set of course root folder. Now, in case you bought the paid CSP version, you don't know how to install it. I'm going to show you. It's extremely simple. Now you can use content manager for very fast navigation. You can open the game from here. You click right click the track or the car. Again, you can select folder. Then you want to click back, trace back to a set of Corsa. And now you're in the root folder. Another alternative method that you can use is to go to your steam. And then once you click on Steam, you select a set of Corsa and then you want to click manage and browse local files and boom, again, we are in the root directory. Now, once we have this and we have the custom lights patch, what we want to do is we open this archive and we want to grab these two files and then drag and drop them right here. Once you've waited a bit, make sure to click replace all the files in the destination. And once this is done, your version of CSP will be updated. Once this is done, you want to go to settings. You want to go to custom shares patch about an updates and right here, you should be set on the paid custom shaders patch version. Next thing we want to do is we want to be in content manager, go to settings, go to a set of Corsa, then go to controls. Now we want to be on axis and then you want to select obviously your input method, which is wheel, of course. Then here you have steering, throw all your pedals on the handbrake. You want to bind everything that you have in case you don't have, you don't bind it. Once you bind your wheel, your pedals or handbrake, obviously, if you have it, you don't want to touch these yet. Wait till you get some experience, then you can touch for degrees. Make sure you're on 900. The game is based on 900. You have the most realism on 900. And also most of the cars are based on 900 degrees of rotation. So if you want to have realistic wheel behavior, you want to be on 900. After all this is done, don't touch the gammas, the scales. This option is garbage as well. Leave it as it is. Next, you want to go to buttons and here for the shifters and for paddles. Let's cover this. If you're using a shifter, you want to tick this box in and bind your shifter right here. If you're not using a H shifter, untick it if it's ticked and then bind your sequential shifter here or bind your paddles. Next gear, previous gear. Pretty simple and pretty straightforward. Here down, you could find a lot of buttons and I'd suggest maybe having your headlights and the horn. You don't need that much. You know, rest is for you to discover. On system, we will find even more buttons. Again, 
you have to discover all this uh, for yourself, but I will highly suggest to bind yourself a teleport to pits button, which will be right here. Next, we're gonna go to patch and patch again is coming with tons of binding options. And I'm only gonna cover the extra options, high beams, hazards, turn signals. These will be most of your interest. Extra, op extra options are obviously for car mods and stuff popping doors and all kinds of stuff. And finally, we're gonna go to force feedback and here to find your settings, I'll leave link down in the description. You wanna join our Discord server, Project X Motorsport. You wanna go down to how to drift category. You wanna go to wheel settings. Then here you have all these great settings made by us. And this tutorial, you could watch it for your own knowledge, just to learn what each setting here does. But if you're using a direct drive wheel, you really do not need a lot of effects. However, we're not going to go into this because I explain absolutely everything inside these posts here. You could read about them and you can get all the settings from here. have all the pictures. If you're using, you know, T300 and all kinds of wheels, especially, you know, the Logitechs. I had a Logitech, so I strongly recommend using these settings. Do not use LUT files. They can damage your wheel. Now... Once you have your wheel settings, you've set up everything. We're going to go back here and now we're going to go on to neck FX. Now, this is not important for people that use VR because you don't need neck FX if you're using VR. So you go to settings, then you go to custom shaders patch and then you want to go down to neck FX. So now again, to get very good settings for yourself, we have very good recommendations. You want to go to a how to drift category again in our Discord server go to neck effect settings and right here I strongly recommend you just start from the info guide and learn a bit about what these settings and how I made them why I made them like that and how they work here you have single monitor uh, single monitor faster rotation triples narrow monitor setup and ultra wide and triple wide uh, setup settings so after you're done with the neck effect settings now we're gonna talk uh, quite more about the drive settings themselves. Before we continue, I want to let you know that if this section here is locked for you and grayed out, that's because you have selected the ideal condition. So I strongly advise you just untick this so you can change anything of here. Then you want to be on practice. And also these three dots right here are a menu, which you can customly set for your drive settings as well. Not only the time, the temperature and the wind and all these you know, factors here with the ballast and restrictor of the engine. What you want to do now again, go to our Discord server and I've made practice settings for you, depending on the level. Obviously, you really don't want to touch any of these until you master your throttle and steering, which will take a long time, believe me. Then you want to take and copy all these settings. There's a picture right here. Once you put all the settings, guys, a very good advice is really save them. It's gonna save you a lot of time in case something happens or you change something by accident. You wanna click save preset and then obviously you wanna save your preset. So I do have them, so I'm not gonna save them again. And again, save this preset as well. And then you wanna go to your settings. You could save your uh, custom shaders patch settings and then you can also save your control settings. Boom, and you wanna have everything saved. This is just a general advice uh, for me. Same with your video settings, that will be our next point of discussion, we're going to leave the apps for almost last. Then about your video settings, just always guys, make sure I've seen this mistake. Have your rendering method to be correct, you know, to the monitor that you have. A lot of people, they have Oculus Rift, which is maybe sometimes set by default and stuff like that. And they run the game in a wrong rendering method. So set correct screen, then set your proper resolution with the Hertz. If you use custom, I do use custom uh, for single. And then obviously I need custom for triples. And then make sure that you do some testing by running these eyes and see how much performance this is taking, that is taking, go to the game, use the benchmark to set good settings enough that you have you don't compromise your performance. Your game can run smoothly and not laggy and patchy and stuttering, but also look a bit good, you know? So after this is done, which this section here about the video is completely on your own, you have to dig a bit, maybe we can cover later. Now we move to applications. So I will strongly advise you in order to save a lot of performance because there's a lot of applications that are heavy. Want to go to our Discord server again and want to go to downloads this time. We want to go to Project X apps and download our Project X HUD. It has all the stuff you will possibly need for everything. 
not to mention it's the only application that can track your steering degrees and your percentages of the pedals and basically how much input you are applying. So once you navigate to here, you want to download the application and you also want to watch my video cover of it explaining everything in full in depth, what the application does and also how you can use it properly and how you can install it. Once this is out of the way, now we're going to move to the car, the tracks and obviously the car tune. When you're here on the drive section, you want to click here where you select the tracks and type drift. Then you want to use this track. Why this track? Pretty simple answer. Quite open, not too big, but still big. You don't want too forgiving tracks and you don't want obviously too hard tracks. This track is the perfect balance for learning. Since my two years of coaching, I've had a lot of tracks tested and a lot of cars tested and this is by far the best. So you can count on my experience. Then about the car, again, we're gonna talk about this. You wanna type E30 and BMW M3 E30 Drift is what you wanna select. What I wanna cover is that a lot of people be like, oh, how to get these mods and stuff. Guys, these are not separate mods. The Drift Track and the E30, they all come with the game. They're already within the game inside, unless obviously you went to the game folder, the content cars and tracks and you deleted them. So then what you wanna do is, in case this is only for people, if you have done that and you deleted your stuff, you wanna pretty much go to properties, you wanna go to uh, install files and then verify integrity of the game and you're gonna restore all these. Now. If you've done, that's only if you've done this mistake. Now about the car I'm gonna cover a bit. You really don't wanna go into highly powered cars, turbo cars and cars with big angle kits or competition angle kits. Why? For example, the Gravies, they have turbo. They'll help you to break the traction very fast because of the turbo. Also, the high turbo settings, if you set the turbo very high, can make the car very aggressive. You don't want anything sudden, crazy, snappy, any of this sort at the beginning when you're learning, especially the angle kits are extremely bad for you because they will make the car more controllable, they will give you some control and they will also be very forgiving. Also, whatever is gonna cause you to spin out in the E30 is not gonna cause you to spin out in the gravy car. Why? Because the angle kit is crazy big. So that's why the angle kits are very bad. You don't want anything too forgiving. E30 is the perfect balance. Great car, low horsepower, no turbo, also decent angle kit. Just enough so you can learn. It's very nice. And then with the tune that we're going to download right now and show you how to set up, you'll be good to go. Once you've got all these things set up, what you want to do, guys, again, go to our Discord server. Then you want to go to downloads, car tunes, and now you want to click on Kunus E30 Drift Tune open this link. This will be a link to my Patreon and this tune is completely free. Once you downloaded it from here and you have it on your desktop or your downloads, what you want to do now is you want to open your folder, then you want to go to documents folder and then Acero Corsa. Now navigate to setups and here you really don't want to go anywhere. Just open the archive with WinRAR or 7-zip, any basically extractor program. Grab this folder and drag it into the empty space right here. You wanna make sure that you haven't selected any of these to highlight them, because you're gonna drop it inside. You wanna drop it in the empty space. Then you drop it here, and obviously I have it, so I'm not gonna click replace. And we're good to go. Once you've done all this, guys, you really set up for the game. So what you wanna do is you go to drive, make sure you're on practice, and then you wanna click go. Now, once in game, you wanna go to the key, then go to generic. I always keep all my tunes on generic and then click on the XC30 Smooth, click Load, and your tune is loaded, car is aligned, you're good to go. Every time you enter the game, you have to select the tune, obviously go to Generic here, either Load, before you start, so that you make sure you have the tune set up and not the default alignment of the car. So that's about it for today's episode, guys. Like and subscribe if you enjoy the content. Comment down below, let me know what you think, and wish you the best for now. We'll see you in the next episode.